and the seasons change. 50 degrees in New York City. Same spot. <laughs> so yesterday I was up in um, I was up in Manhattan. I had all my gear with me. I was ready to do a real introspective research into uh, you know some people up there. I went to uh, Comic Con, you know, Comic Con. Comic Con. It's a uh, comic book. <laughs> convention where all these people dress up like the comic characters it's held at the Javits Center but it was $50 to get in so <laughs> guess what <laughs> I didn't go in <clears throat> but um, I don't know I was just in a place where I wanted to um, I was because I don't really like comic books I think they're stupid really you know the I don't know I used to collect them as a kid just because because of the value you know and then flip them, buy them, and sell them, like kind of like records, you know. But uh, as far as the stories and stuff, and the type of people that are attracted to comic books, I don't know. It's really not my thing. Although I do like Star Trek, you know, and and um, Deep Space Nine and all that stuff. Love Star Trek. So what do I want to talk about today? So just some news events. I wanted to talk about jealousy, right? I, I was in a uh, place yesterday, right? Because I was walking around trying to do a story about comic book people, and I wasn't feeling it, so I got like, um, I, I don't know, I guess I was experiencing the human emotion, you know, of, uh, I don't know which one they are anymore. You know, after, uh, and, and I say this with, um, you know, I, I, people will probably not going to understand what I'm talking about, but. When you meditate for a long time, when you spend many years um, in in meditation, you start to observe the human emotion, the human, uh, the way the human brain kind of operates, you know, and uh, and you kind of become separate from it. You you you're able to observe thought as it arises, as it folds. The um, able to observe the human emotion as it's about to kick in the trigger right? and so you know <laughs> I'm not saying I'm above human human emotion but for the most part I don't really I don't really experience <laughs> emotion in the intense way most people do anymore uh, 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 but sometimes I do like yesterday I wanted to talk about I revisited jealousy. Hmm. That's a good one, jealousy. So after I wasn't able to find my story about the comic books, I went to a um, a gathering, a place where I, I know I have some friends. And an interesting character popped up, right? A guy that is so successful and so beautiful and so amazing. Right? And, and there he was, and, and and me, I don't have $50 to get into the comic book convention, right? And I experienced the, the, the big him, little me, right? And this, this is a really successful character. This is probably one of the most, well, he is. Forbes has ranked him, you know, one of the 100 most influential people in the world, right? It's a fashion designer in New York City, J uh, Mark Jacobs. Uh, so, so you know, I was there, and I, you know, and, and he's just a, he's just a regular guy, you know, where I am, where I well, because I know him, right? Kind of know him, you know. I know him through people, and I just thought to myself, wow, this guy is just, it's just, I mean, he's he's so amazing. The guy is is um he's calvin klein you know right and this, he's right in front of you and he's just a humble guy you know and um and worth you know hundreds of millions of dollars i mean just so much money and so much and so beautiful you know he's so elegant in his dress i mean he's a fashion guy you know he looks like a you know like like a and and what i'm trying to say is that's there's a there's a twinge of Wow, a twinge of jealousy kicks in. It's like, look at him, big him, little me. Like, like he's somebody and I'm nobody. Uh, 
That's how you feel for a moment. You just like, you just like, wow. I, I mean, I, I wanted to ask him, hey, why don't you come on my show and we'll talk. And I, I didn't even have the, I didn't even have the testicles to ask him because I felt like, why would such a big, why would such a huge figure like him come down to my little stupid level of, you know, because I'm nobody, you know, and I'm nothing, right? Why would he want to do that? I didn't even have the, you know, that's, and, I'm, and it is, what it is, is the human emotion of jealousy. I think human emotions drive everything. I think it's the, and I'm grateful that I experienced that because I don't experience that often, you know, because I basically don't give a fuck anymore, right? <laughs> But I, I was grateful that I, that I was able to experience that sense of jealousy. And, um, and the other person has no idea what's going on. They don't know that you're feeling that way. Right? And I noticed that people approach me that way. Like they're jealous of, I don't know, for me. I mean, I, I just do what I do, you know. And I'm, I'm grateful to be able to do what I do. You know, I love this. I love what I do and I don't even know what it is. Right? Truth. Digging for the truth, right? Trying to help people out of the clouds, you know? The catcher in the rye. Right? Catch people before they go off the cliff. Okay. So, so that's extreme success, extreme wealth, right? A guy like Mark Jacobs, the one of the top fashion designers in the world. Mega millions, right? 200 stores in 90, 90 countries. 60 countries, whatever it is. Huge, huge success. Right? And then there's... And then there's mediocre success, right? He's the top one-tenth of one percent. Right? He's the, the elite. So high up the scale, it's unbelievable. It's like, he's so high up, your ears pop. But then there's millions of others that are doing pretty well. They're doing okay, especially in New York City. They're doing good. Uh, they don't know what poverty is. They don't know what... They don't know the extreme of, you know, have not. Ha uncertainty in your life where, you know, you don't know how you're going to pay a bill or, or, or you, know, you know, when you're going to take a vacation or you feel trapped in the where you live or what, what you do, you know. Those folks don't... He doesn't understand that. Or maybe he does. And maybe that's why he's so successful, because he does understand it. I don't know. What do I know? Right. But, so, he's the 1%, right? And, look, why do I like Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders, they say he had a heart attack, so. And the right-wing propagandists and the, you know, the idiots, you know, the... The YouTube Satanists are already saying, oh, he's out. No, 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 he's out. He's got to throw in a towel. No, he had a heart attack. He's 78. He's got to go. <laughs> uh, Bernie Sanders has the heart of a lion, man. He's not going to quit. Bernie Sanders is not going to quit. What, are you kidding me? He'll drop dead before he quits. He's the real deal, man. I keep telling you that shit. Guy's not going to drop out. So he had a real heart attack. We'll have to evaluate the extent to which... His heart was damaged. His, uh, it was a little suspicious when he was in the hospital for three days and not just a few hours or whatever from having stints inserted. He actually had a heart attack. So that's an indication that if he had a myocardial, myocardial infarction, meaning heart attack, that means that to some degree, some damage could have been done to his heart. Because once the oxygen cuts off, you're, you're now in a sense of deprivation, oxygen deprivation, and your heart is getting choked, right? Coronary arteries are the, are the arteries that surround the heart. That's what clogs in a heart attack. Right? If it happens in your brain, that's a stroke. So Bernie Sanders had a heart attack. It's now official. His, can, uh, can, his campaign acknowledged that. But what does he have to do with the story, right? Because Bernie Sanders is fighting for the 1%. He's fighting for the 99%. He's fighting against the 1%. Right? That's what he's doing. Why is there a pipe? Look at this pipe stuck in the tree. 
what the hell is that all about? I don't even want to try to figure it out. Why is there a pipe? Did it grow that way? Do, pri do pipes grow from trees? What's in the pipe? Very strange. Very strange. So Bernie Sanders is the 99%, the voice of the of the 99%. Right? And there he was fighting, you know? Right? Compassion. Right? Bernie Sanders suffers from the the the, the human emotion of compassion. Right? He's compassionate for others. Sitting in the hospital. He was grateful that he had universal health care. He had health care for himself, and he wished it that all people had what he had. That's compassion. That's a great man. That's a great thinker. Right? Should he be? Should he have been the president? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So I don't know what else I really want to talk about. The Hong Kong mask thing. Uh, it looks like the. Um, it looks like the protesters just kept on going, you know? They're not gonna yield, right? They're not gonna yield, they're gonna keep fighting back. Right? Right? Persistence, the human, the human, the human emotion of, of uh, purpose, right? The Hong Kong people have that sense of purpose, they're not gonna quit. Right? Sometimes when I feel down, I go I go back and I revisit my past. I go stand in front of a house I used to live in and I say, wow. And I, and I let the memories come back, you know, like sometimes I go over the bridge to Staten Island and I stand in my, I stand in front of my grandmother's house. In the yard, you could see the yard where, you know, where I learned how to ride a bicycle with my grandmother running behind me, you know. And I see the, you know, I see the, the garage where, where I used to park my bicycle and had my band in the garage and down in the basement. And I look at the house and I, and I wonder and I realize that, you know, it's like in a flash, it's all gone. It's like 30 years are gone, just like in a snap. And it's, that's how short life is, right? And it's like, what are you doing now? What are you doing now with yourself? Planning for tomorrow? Planning for someday, someday, something great is going to happen. Someday, we'll sail away. <laughs> or, can we fight it now? Can we, can we be present in our, in our, for our lives right now without killing each other? You know, I think again, all politics. Politics are a reflection of the bigger picture. There, I'm sorry. Politics are a reflection of the smaller picture. What's happening? The way people online treat each other, eating each other up, treating each other disrespectfully, not, not, um, not acknowledging their humanness or the boundaries. I. Of, of others, right? And that's something that I, I like to look into and expose because, you know, with, the, with these gang stalkers and these stalker characters, right? It's interesting to me because they don't seem to have any boundaries in the sense of who they will, who they will engage and to what degree they'll engage them uh, until they meet someone like me who doesn't have any boundaries whatsoever. And then blows them up. That's really what's going on. Right? That's funny. Never underestimate the the insanity of the other guy, right? Especially if a guy, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason. <laughs> so I don't know. I hope that's that's a bit of a ramble today. But what I'm trying to, get, you know, touch on sometimes you, I guess the the season changes and the emotion changes and the, you know, it's cool out now and. And all these trees and leaves are going to be gone soon, and they die, and then they they fertilize the ground for the next round of life, next next season. And we hang on in our little in our little worlds, waiting 
waiting next year is going to be better. It's going to be better than this year. Hope. Hope. Hope for a better day. So, yeah, and Marcus County reporting on this beautiful fall day in New York. My bridge is still here. My bridge of size is still here. The bridge of my youth. Marcus Conti reporting.